Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating omega squared after ANOVA using SPSS. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. And I'm going to calculate omega squared, which is a measure of effect size. Now normally, after ANOVA, we would use eta squared or partial eta squared. After a one-way ANOVA, the values of eta squared and partial eta squared are the same. Again, here we'll be calculating omega squared. And the reason we may want to do that is because eta squared is based on the sample. So it overestimates the population effect size. So if you're interested in the effect size based on the population, you would calculate omega squared. The same guidelines for small, medium, and large effect size are applied to both eta squared and omega squared. Another important point here with omega squared is there is a statistic called partial omega squared, which estimates the population effect size when you have more than one factor. Here I'm just using one-way ANOVA, so I'm going to stay with omega squared. So first we'll conduct a one-way ANOVA here using this independent variable program. And this has three levels, REBT, psychodynamic, and waiting list. So one independent variable, three levels. So one-way ANOVA. And then I have one dependent variable named anxiety, and that's measured at the continuous level of measurement. What SPSS refers to as the scale level of measurement. So I'll go to Analyze, then General Linear Model, Univariate. This is what the dialog looks like by default for the dependent variable text box here. I'm going to move Anxiety over to that because that's our dependent variable. And Program is our independent variable, so it moves to this fixed factor list box. And I'm going to leave all these settings as they are by default, except for under Options. I'm going to check off estimates of effect size. This will allow us to compare eta squared with the statistic we're going to calculate, omega squared. Click Continue, then click OK. So we have here in the Statistics Viewer the output from the one-way ANOVA. We can see we have equal sample sizes, 15 participants in each group. And moving down here to test a between subjects effects, I'm going to interpret the effect of program right here. And you see we have the sum of squares for program, two degrees of freedom. We have the mean square, the F statistic, 6.427 in this case, the p value, 0 0.004. So this is a statistically significant finding based on an alpha of 0 0.05. 0 0.004 is less than 0 0.05. And then we have partial eta squared, and again this is equal to eta squared here with just a one-way ANOVA. When you have one factor, those two statistics are the same. And the value here is 0.234, or 23.4 percent. So we know that 23.4 percent of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. Again, when dealing with the sample, not with the population. So we have the partial eta squared value for the sample, and we want to calculate the omega squared value for the population. Even though eta squared and partial eta squared are based on the sample, and omega squared is based on the population, omega squared still tells us about the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is accounted for by the independent variable. So it's the same concept in terms of effect size. It's the same method to describe how important the differences are with the independent variable as measured by the dependent variable. However, it's important to note here that this type of effect size, the one that looks at the proportion of variance in the dependent variable explained by the independent variable, is not the only type of effect size. All effect sizes measure how important 
the difference in the independent variable is as measured on the dependent variable, but not all of them do it in the same method. Not all of them use the variance in the dependent variable. The same guidelines for interpreting effect size can be used for eta squared, partial eta squared, as well as omega squared. So a small effect size would be from 1% to 6%, a medium effect size from 6% to 14%, and a large effect size would be greater than 14%. So in this case, with an effect size of 23.4% for eta squared, that would be a large effect size. So I've copied this table over to Excel, and that's where I'm going to make the calculation for omega squared. So I'll bring that up. So this is the same table here as we have in the output viewer in SPSS using the general linear model and univariate under analyze. And here is the equation for omega squared. Sum of squares between minus k minus 1 multiplied by mean squares within subjects and all that is divided by sum of squares total plus mean squares within subjects. So you'll notice here on this output table that I've copied over from SPSS there is no label for mean squares within. Instead we use error. Mean squares error is the same thing as mean squares within. So if I go to the output, back to the output, and I go up to analyze, I can run a one-way ANOVA through compare means as well. So compare means, one-way ANOVA, and anxiety is the dependent variable, program is the factor, and click OK, and you can see we have the same S statistic value, 6.427, the same p-value, 0 0.004. And looking here at the mean square for error up in this first uh, table, you have 27.768. That's equal here to the mean square for within groups. So within groups, mean square, the same thing as error, mean square. So moving back to Excel, I'll populate the statistics I have here in orange. So we have sum of squares between. So this will be equal to the program sum of squares. Just like that, cell B6. Degrees of freedom for the effect. Again, that's going to be for program. That's going to be value of 2. So equal sign cell C6. So it's the number of levels of the independent variable minus 1. That's the K minus 1. Mean square within. Again, that's going to be error. So it'll be equal sign and the mean square for the error cell D7, and then sum of squares total. Here in this output table, it's labeled corrected total. So it'll be equal sign, and that's cell B9. So again, just moving back to the output view here in SPSS, you can see the corrected total here, 15.23.2. That's what we have in Excel. This is the same table that's copied over to Excel. And this table below, the other method for running one-way ANOVA, it's just labeled total. The sum of squares just labeled total instead of corrected total. So I have all the statistics I need to calculate omega squared using this equation here to the right. So I'll move down and put the function in in cell D19. So this will be equal sign, sum of squares between minus degrees of freedom effect D15. I'll multiply that by mean square within. And this whole expression will be divided by sum of squares total plus mean squares within. So divided by sum of squares total. That's cell D17 plus mean square within cell D16. So this gives us an omega squared effect size of 0.19, or 19.4%. So our eta squared, or partial eta squared, value was 0 0.234, 23.4%.
and the omega squared is 19.4 percent. So again this eta squared, partial eta squared value 23.4 percent is based on the sample and omega squared 19.4 percent is based on the population. I hope you found this video on calculating omega squared after ANOVA in SPSS to be useful. Thanks for watching.